Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Airblade UAV Intrepid Mini. I built mine with a Beta FPV 1204 5000 kV motors, HQ 3 inch T-style props, Beta FPV all-in-one with a 12 amp ESC, the Nameless RC D400 VTX which also features a DVR, Runcam Nano 2. For motors you might also check out the new Superman motors from Airblade UAV, Pyrodrome Mini Battery Strap, Airblade UAV also has their own mini battery straps. VTX antenna mounted down here off a of zip tie and some heat shrink. You can top mount your battery or you can bottom mount it. You can also use the typical whoop board or a 16 by 16 stack. Something we're not seeing much anymore is camera protection. The way I have mine built weighs 80 grams. I flew it on three SGNB and RDQ 520 milliamp batteries, bringing our all up weight to 122 and a half grams. Bottom plate is two millimeters thick. Top plate is 1.5 millimeters. Camera protection is also 1.5 millimeters. Motor post to motor post and getting about 132 millimeters. Frame is somewhat stiff for two millimeter carbon supporting three inch props. So this is a really nice day. Good and calm, barely a breeze, so a good fly day. And we're gonna take a look at the really crispy clean footage that we get from the SD card recording. Now, I am not impressed with uh, the video reception. So inside the goggles, I don't care for this VTX, especially running at 400 milliwatts. I've seen much better performance from many others. Matter of fact, the uh, Happy Model version, as far as the VTX goes, does have better reception. But I, I just have a lot of troubles with these DVRs that are built into the VTX. I've had three of them not work, just out of the package, just not work. And in this particular build, I had one of those that, not, that didn't work, so I had to get another one. Because I did want to go back to this. This isn't something that we've seen much of here, at least here on my channel. Uh, we did have the Ishii Novice 3 that had an SD card reader, but it didn't work. Again, didn't work. And in all these cases, I try cards, I try formatting, I, I do all the typical troubleshooting for stuff like this. But in one case of the uh, D400 from Nameless RC or Full Speed RC, uh, I found that the white light would come on to record, but you just couldn't activate recording. So I couldn't even get it to read the SD card for like when you put the, uh, for the firmware on the card so that the VTX can be updated to the different recording types. So I just, it just didn't work. Um, anyways, uh, with 3-inch props and these 1204 motors, we get some pretty big punch-outs. And then this freestyle sort of format, I think for people who might be a little bit newer to the hobby, it, it's more attuned to different sort of flight. You know, I kind of have this racing style, and I try to do some punch-outs, and I work in some other stuff, and I'm always kind of staying under the canopy except for those big punch-outs. This is, you, you feel the balance in the turn, whereas if you're racing and you want to go fast, you want to get quick in and out of the turn, of course you can always turn up your rates and maybe uh, tweak your pid tune or something like that. But you can feel the balance difference. Oh, that power loop wasn't very good. Let's try that again here in a second. But you can feel the balance in this top battery mount situation. If you're interested in something with the top battery mount, I don't think you'll be disappointed in it. I don't think it's anything to stray away from. And I think some more experienced pilots might have a strong affinity for that. If you're one of those pilots, I would strongly suggest that maybe you want to go to Airblade UAV and check out the frame. I do see the frame comes in at around uh, $17.99. They're offering a current 10% uh, discount if you buy two of those. Our flight, as we finish up here, comes in at about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So before we get into the talking points, a little promo about Airblade UAV, and one of the things I really want to try, and I'm going to mention it here, is their new Superman motors. Uh, previously, the Superman motors, and they're called that, I think we just call them that. I don't know if Airblade UAV even calls them that or not, but they're 1404s, and they come in various KVs. I've run them before. On this, you can see the motors right here. They're 1404s, and I, I like the feel of the 1404 on a three-inch prop, but these 1204 motors do a pretty good job as well. But I mention that because it is a new motor. It used to be made by DYS. DYS went out of business, so Airblade then has found a new motor manufacturer to make uh, their Superman motors at their specifications. So if you go to the Airblade site, you might want to dig around. And there's more than just Airblade stuff. He's kind of developed a shop. Now you'll find a lot of the bind and flies out of stock, but there are batteries. You can find various electronics. They do ship out of Canada. So that's something to note as far as your shipping time uh, and maybe a little bit on the shipping cost. But you know, you can always fill your card up and take a look to see what it costs and uh, find out that they note all right on the site. If you order a hundred dollars worth of stuff, free shipping, to the USA. So there you go. Uh, I ran out of Airblade straps here a while back. I should have ordered more, but I, I think the Airblade strap is a touch longer than the Pyrodrone strap. I think it's about 10 millimeter difference. So that's 
negligible, but they both use this metal buckle, which is my preference for a battery strap. I like a good strap with a buckle on it. I did mention in the quick roll, but this is the light Umagrip, so this stuff... It's it's relatively sticky. I've had a number of batteries on and off, so it's a little bit dirty. Could use a little bit of cleaning. How I clean them is I generally just lick my finger, get a good amount of saliva on there. Of course, no battery plugged in, and then I just kind of rub my finger around, and then I take another finger that's dry and rub it across to get the debris and the stuff off of there while it's still wet. And then when it dries, it gets a lot of its stickiness back. I mentioned the flexibility a little bit, and this is it's got a wide base to it, so you don't have a real thin body here. Um, so it. For supporting three inch props it's it's not stiff by any stretch and it's only two millimeters and i want to compare it here to the uh, armitan tadpole yes this will be coming i've had this built i've been tinkering with motor prop combinations i'm not sure what i'm going to end up on but this is thicker carbon i believe this is two 2.5 millimeter carbon and supports a shorter uh prop so only two and a half inch props and it's just as flexible. So I'm starting to wonder about the whole stiffness being a real issue other than a preference on flight feel. Some people might feel the difference. Some people might not. It's going to depend upon your flight style, your flight skill set, uh, and possibly your build weight. You know, more weight if you get real thick, heavy motors on there can really generate a lot of low-end thrust really fast. And you've got a fairly bulky battery maybe in the center. You may feel the flex of the props or f you might feel the flex of the arms um, in those cases. But also something that we've talked about a few times on the channel with the uh, carbon wallpaper, I guess I should call it. You know, we've talked about this a few times. That some people are, are really, they really want there not to be any cross hatching, and cross hatching has become kind of a negative term. Cross hatching is where you see, um, instead of like on the bodies, you see how the weave kind of goes with the body on the length, where it goes across here on the arms, and that supposedly makes things, you know, weak. Yeah, Armitan's known for making really good frames with lifetime warranties, so if they're cutting it this way, maybe it's special to their carbon, but can there really be anything that wrong with it? Again, there is going to be a feel or preference, I get that, but I kind of like to put the whole stiffness thing to bed. I know many people appreciate the fact that I talk about it a little bit, but we've seen a lot of flexible frames, especially as we've been going lighter and lighter over the course of the last six months or so so um, my preference actually for arms would be skinny arms that have three millimeter fi carbon fiber but then that goes back to the, the traditional toothpick that bob designed um, and so if you're a frame designer you can't just keep copying and doing the same thing that other people have done so i i get why we have different arms and there's a different feel uh, to this sort of uh, machine also it's worth noting that if you build something like a traditional toothpick, and yeah, I'll be I'll be showing this on the channel shortly too. I've been flying it around and it's good fun. The big difference between these two, of course, there's going to be a flight difference because this is so much heavier. You know, it's what 25% heavier than this one. This one's like I think 56 grams it's built, and this one's almost 80. So uh, you can figure the percentage out there. And of course, we have real skinny arms versus much wider arms. These are thicker, but. This is highly exposed in this area, and when I have this video come out, you'll see I take a dead-on shot to the tree, and I was really surprised that everything survived. So in that particular case, everything was fine, and I didn't suffer any damage. But my concern is, especially if you're a newer pilot flying something like this, that your components can get more damaged, whereas this, a more traditional design, has things more protected. So something I want to throw out there, I know we have a lot of new people that have come to the channel, especially since that big giveaway at the turn of the year. And I want to make sure that, you know, we talk about these things. Some of my longtime subscribers will have either heard this before or they're well-versed enough so they understand the risk when you build something like this versus the protection that you get with a traditional build. I like the motors. I thought they, f they handled the prop pretty well. And I've got another set like over here. I think these will handle the two and a half inch prop the tri-blade better but uh, i wouldn't i tried tri-blades on this and i did not like it i didn't like it at all and i know people have run tri-blades on these motors and really loved it i did not care for it i thought the throttle response was quite frankly a little bit sloppy with tri-blades that's why i dropped back to bi blades and i got a little bit more flight time we only had a flight time at two minutes and 30 seconds which isn't necessarily what i'm looking for i'm trying to get to three minutes because if i can get three minutes then i would think a good majority of People who watch this channel would get more than that. Uh, there's going to be some of you that just blow me out of the water and get less than that when it comes to, you know, just 
putting the throttle down, putting the nose down, and going fast and going hard. But so I'm trying to on the channel get to three minutes on most of my builds. In this particular case, I just don't know that it can be done unless you go to a motor that's bigger, and that's why I suggest the 1404. It might be much more efficient in handling these props, the by blades. You might even be able to handle the tri blades effect effectively. I just didn't think these 1204s handled the tri blades. The HQ, I think they're 3030 props, they're tri blades. I just didn't care for. I thought it kept me from being able to fly like I wanted to fly and I always felt like I was on the edge of not being in control because I couldn't get the quad to respond as quickly as I needed to to fly like I like to fly. Again, my typical build tips, I've got a zip tie down here that secures my battery lead down. You can see I've got a little bit of slack over here in my battery. So when it pulls on it here, that this will pull on the pads. This isn't a great location. I think it would be best if you could work out a way to go straight up here and keep your battery lead out of harm's way from the prop coming by. So you should be able to come straight up here. I didn't want to do that because of the buttons I was trying to get to, and I didn't want to have to put on a new lead. So that's something to consider. This The reason why this isn't ideal is that you get this next to your VTX antenna, and you kind of want your VTX antenna to be nice and proud for the best possible reception. Of course, a better VTX would have helped out with that a lot, but we get some really good footage because of the onboard recording. You can see we have holes in the top of the stack that mount up with the 16x16 16 16 stack so that your stack can go all the way through and it can mount itself to keep from moving around too, too much. Although in your flight controller, you do want a little bit of movement with soft mounting. That eliminates vibrations getting from out on the arms into the flight controller. And as you can see here, I've got a little bit of movement with my uh, rubber mounting here on my flight controller. There is a wiring harness that the D400 has that allows you to record the OSD information as well. So if you wanted that, you could record that at a much more clear uh, onboard recording style with the other wiring harness. I just didn't go with it because I didn't have it handy. I didn't know what I'd done with it. But yeah, check out Airblade UAV. They got all sorts of frames, not just this one. Uh, they have electronics, they have uh, the flight controllers, ESCs, they've got lipos, they've got bind and flies. There's, a, I think, only one or two, a Daytone 339 and 329 um, are in stock, but everything else is out of stock. But check out uh, airbladeuav.com for this frame and electronics to build it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.